Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, amen. amen. All the time, God is good. Amen. amen. I tell you, we just we just in a place, in a place in the Lord where we just thank and praise God for the word of God. Amen. amen. What the word what the word is doing in our lives and in our hearts, amen. 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 Because the word of God is rich and I'm telling you, it's doing some things, amen. 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 All that doing is blessing us, amen. Because yeah. I've got now with traditional religion, you got to use the key word blessed. Yes. I'm blessed, yes. amen. amen. You got to use that word because if you don't use that word, then they won't see they won't see what you mean by that. But see, we see the spiritual part of the blessings, yes. amen, of the amen. Lord, and it's making them, and He's making it rich and adding no sorrows to us. So in the meantime, we're experiencing a new life in him, a new joy, a new walk, a new way, amen, amen. a new new being, amen, new creatures we are in this thing called salvation. We do not offer the rights to the songs being sing, nor the music being played in this house, but it's all to God be the glory.
Coming from Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. Amen. Amen. We will start reading at verse 17 together. Son of man, man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is born, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the word of God. Amen. Amen. I tell you, the word is right. The word is right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go to page one and say you are still holy. Amen. Amen.
a breathe period, unless it's a demonic spirit, okay? And we say that in Sunday school, but yeah, the spirits are real, and that's why we come here. We come here to unite with one another. Yes. So that way, whatever God has shared, you know, or he has, whenever he has a word, he'll use whichever one he wants to use to speak that word to the whole body, yes. you know, of spirits that have conjured together. And I, I love it. I just love the way he does things. Because I'm telling you, spirituality is the true way to go in salvation. Because without it, everything else is just mind-boggling. And you're trying to feel your way through stuff. And you're trying to see your way through stuff that you can't see and understand. Yeah. But the spirit knows. Yeah. You know? And I love, I love the way God has got this thing designed. Because like I said, Satan, you know, he needs bodies also to operate in the earth realm. He also is a spirit being, okay? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, he's a demonic spirit being. Yeah. Uh huh. And that's where he fools a lot of people because of the fact that that he does that they don't give themselves the opportunity to be released in the spirit by the spirit. They try to get in it on their own. They try to operate in it on their own, and that's where he comes in at. Right. Yeah, he comes in at to infiltrate and change, give you illusions and delusions of things that are not there. Yeah, yeah. Cause see, everybody's not a dreamer. Everybody is not. You know, I hear people all the time. That's why I know I'm a prophet because I dream. Okay, everybody's not a dreamer, and that does not make you always a prophet. You know, because it depends upon what you're dreaming. Yeah. And if what you're dreaming is not conducive in unity to the body and for the body, then that's something else going on. Yeah. You might have took too much mess medication. Is that just a regular dream? It's just a dream, yeah. Because if a person's lifestyle is not lining up with the will of God, you know, God can't, God can't do nothing with that. Now, he can use a dream to show you where you coming short in him. But the thing is, if you don't understand that, you'll just chalk it off and go, oh, I just ate too much fish last night. Somebody said Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Somebody get ready to die. Some old stupid stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that's what people do. Yeah. yeah. But I tell you, the spirit of God is real, and he's real in his people. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. I love it. And he set his people ready. Because like I said, 2025 is going to be the season of truth. Amen. It is the time of truth. And that's when we've got to go out as spirit beings and deliver that truth. I love it. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. 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 Are we going to sing one more song or are we going to go? You have to you have to pump and prime him before the the, the, the video starts. Give him a chance. Give, give me notice so you tell me what I need to do and stuff. Amen. Yeah. You want to sing him and celebrate him? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
know that you want to now, but I'm ready to go ahead and open up the word. Come on, let's go ahead and get the word. Amen. 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 We've already taken up our offering. Amen. If you're not here and you desire to give to the ministry, we do have a few outlets for you. Amen. We have Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign personal touch 3451. We also have Givelify and PayPal. That's going to be listed under personal touch international ministry. We do have our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 102. That's Hope Mills, North Carolina, 28348. Amen. 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 So we're not going to prolong the service. Amen. We're going to go ahead and turn the mic back over to Apostle Robinson so she can bring the word. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We just thank and praise God. Amen. For this new day that he's made, this new day that he's given us another opportunity Amen. to be a part of what he has done. Amen. 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 Because he has truly created a new day. Amen. And he's given us an opportunity to be in it. Amen. To work. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 To worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. To lift up his name. Amen. 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 To be a witness in this earth realm so that all will see, hear, know, and do the will, the perfect will of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our job is to prove what is acceptable to the Lord in this earth. Amen. Today. That's our job. We got to prove to all what is acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Because everything that we see is not acceptable to the Lord. Everything that's going on, everything that's being said, they, 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 they try to dress it up with the word. The word of God is not acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Because you know, you can use the word of God in disgust. Yeah. And it'll cause God to be disgusted and it will be like an abomination of use in his eyesight. Amen. Amen. So when we don't do what God wants us to do or how God wants things done, amen, we put ourselves in a bad position. We put a bad taste in God's mouth. Amen. 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 I'm trying to tell you. And I, I can see why he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You ain't going to put no bad taste in my mouth through my word. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just appreciate you for being our God. We love you so much, Father, for this new day. Oh, God, we thank you for the peace that you spoke into this day, and we heard it. Oh, so, God, we thank you, Lord God, for the love that you created in this day, Lord God, and we became saturated with it. We thank you, Lord God, for the Word of God, the Spirit of God. We thank you for your Son, Jesus. Oh, Lord God, that you used all that you prepared and sent to us in this earth realm that we will be able to do that which is perfect and good in your sight. Bring pleasure to you, Lord God, that we will be able to do the will of God and obey it and keep yes. it in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, this is the word of God, your word, Father, that you placed in this house, under this roof, oh God, and that you put in the spirit realm that at the sound of my voice, all will hear, all will see, know, and do according to, thy, according to thy good and perfect will in the name of Jesus. So we said, let the word of God reign. Hallelujah. Let it ring out in the atmosphere. Let it ring out in the highways and in the byways. Oh God, let heaven be pleased, oh God, with what it hears. I say, God, I love those times. Uh, in this place, oh God, through this vessel, that you will be pleased, glorified, and honored in the earth realm. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just got a little simple word for you today. Take dominion over you. Amen. Take dominion over you. Amen. Dominion. Oh, I don't want to hear this message. I, I already got dominion. Take dominion over you. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story first, amen, before I tell you about how to take that dominion, how to get it back, amen. amen. Dominion over the earth in Genesis 1, 26 through 27 is God giving the spirit man in you and I 
male and female gender, the responsibility to rule and have power over the earth. In other words, to rule and have power over that which he has created. Amen? Amen. Not ownership. Amen. But to be able to rule and have power over what he has created. Dominion was not given to one race, people of God, because we are all one race, some just lighter and darker, depending on where your origin began and is today. Amen. That explains why we are of certain color. Amen. Because of the, maybe the sun wasn't shining too much on your side like it was shining on my side. Whatever the case may be, dominion was not given to one race. Amen. Genesis 1, 26 through 27, it says so. It does not say it gave it to the blacks and the whites. You know, it just says this. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them, please hear that word, underline it in your Bible. It don't say let me, it says let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. In the image of God, in the image of God created he him. God created him. Okay? Male and female created he, God, them. Amen? God created both male and female. So we know that man is spirit, soul, and body in male and female gender in this house. We know that. Amen? So therefore, again, as I said one day, uh, one time on Sunday, last Sunday, there's no such thing as God didn't call a woman to preach. Stop looking at the gender and look at the spirit man that's in the gender. Amen? Amen. So when you all are approached with that, I don't know why your pastor, she female, she God ain't called her to preach. No, God called the spirit man in her to preach. Right. Amen. Amen. Genesis 5, 2. And here's my validation. Genesis 5 and 2 says, male and female created he them. That's God. He created them and blessed them and called their name. Highlight that word there, T-H-E-I-R. Their name, Adam. Uh-huh. One name for male and female, Adam. In the day when they were created. Again, underline the word day. In the day when they were created. So there's no such thing nowhere written in the Bible. You know, and if you keep using that little scripture in 1 Corinthians, I believe on 1 Timothy, I think it's 1 Corinthians. When Paul made the statement that the woman needs to keep silent, okay? That ain't, that's not, that's because of what was going on. Whatever was going on in that, in the Corinth at that time. And those women were chattering and asking questions and all this kind of stuff. That has nothing to do with the spirit man preaching the gospel. Come on now, because see, Jesus, when Jesus came, Jesus came to restore the spirit man. Yeah, uh -huh. And that's in male and female, as we know. So spirit is that part of man which knows, okay? And, we, and which will unite and cooperate him to the spiritual creation and gives him God consciousness. It's only the spirit part of you that is God conscious. Your natural man does not care about God. Your natural outwardness don't love God. Don't, don't want to be bothered with God. Soul, your soul implies self-conscious life. As distinguished from the plants, which have unconscious life. And I, I'm hoping that we were able to word this right. So an unconscious and unconscious life is a state of living with true spiritual awareness and the intent of the deeper levels of conscience that should drive the spirit man's thoughts, imagination, his will, his mind, and his emotions to conform and behave to that which is unaware 
that which you don't know about in this external realm, okay? And in other words, the influence and the beliefs of it. Because see, man is trickery. Man is full of tricks and he's subtle, he's full of lies, and he wants to deceive you through his influence and control. Amen? So we've got to be able to live an unconscious life that is, is more geared toward the spiritual side of the spirit man that's in you, okay? I hope that, that, that makes sense. The spirituality of man must be lived out of his heart, which is his subconscious mind through his conscience. The spiritual heart of the spirit man is seated below in his soul. In our soul lies the seat of man's will, mind, and emotions. Psalms 42, 1 through 6. Let's read that. Psalms 42, verses 1 through 6. Psalms 42, verses 1 through 6. Yes, ma'am. When I say yes, I mean good. Uh, Psalms 42, 1 through 6. If this is your proof here now that your soul, it, it, it talks to the spirit, it's the spirit man that's in you, amen? Psalms 42, Psalms 42, verses 1 through 6. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And if the heart is talking about a deer, okay? The H-A-R-T, not the H-E-A-R-T, a deer. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Verse 6, O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonite from the hill Mizar. So in our soul lies the seat of man's will, his mind, emotions, desires, affections, and they are for the Lord. That, you know, our soul pants after the Spirit of God and nothing else. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the blessings in the house and, and, and the possessions, the natural possessions, soul does not pant for those things. He has to be able to hear the voice of God, to be able to, to visualize the countenance of God. Amen? Amen. And so on and so on. So the spiritual heart of man is seated below in his soul, as we said. The heart is the seat of the soul of the spirit man. This is man's subconscious. The natural part of man is something that really got me as I was uh, writing this up from looking at uh, a word that I had looked up, amen? The natural part of man is characteristically the psychical, P-S-Y-C-H-I-C-A-L, the psychical, say it, the psychical, 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 yeah. And, and he's the, the natural man is like the psychic man. In other words, the psychical is the term used for the word psychic. And soul is often synonymous or tried to, to be familiar and parallel with that part of man. We try to make our soul, you know, conform to that part of man, that natural man, amen? amen. So the word psychical is another term for psychic. It means relating to or influenced by the human mind or psychic. And the human mind, what we can 
consider as the human mind is this brain. That's what we consider as being the mind, the human mind. It can also be deferred to, referred to a person who claims to be responsive to psychic outside the sphere of physical science or knowledge. The reason that word caught my eyesight is because I've been asking God for years, <laughs> how is it that people, when they prophesy, which now I've learned that they're not prophesying because when they do it to the natural man, they're projecting. Okay, they're not really prophesying, because prophesying is spiritual, okay? So when you're projecting to the natural man, you're basically speaking from a psychic, yeah, yeah from a psyche, your psyche as a psychic, okay? Yeah. So when you see God, you know, blessing a person with houses, cars, and land, and you're nowhere but right here, it's not spiritual because it's not deep, and it's not of the Lord, and it's not the things that God will have that soul to know. So you're basically speaking to the natural man. So that's why we have to watch what we say when we say God is telling us to say certain things. Now, mind you, if, if you are a spiritual-minded person and your spirituality is in control, then yes, you do have the ability also to speak those spiritual things to that individual so it can relate, let me put that word out there, to the natural for them. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay, because see, what, what a lot of ministries are doing, they're proper lines that they're basically projecting to the natural man the things that they're trying to say that God is going to give them from a spiritual to a natural blessing, so to speak, okay? And they're using that psyche, psychical, which is a psychic, okay, man. They're using that out of man to minister to the out of man, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. And I, I thought that word was very, uh, 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 unusual, because I don't think I've ever even used that word or even heard of it until I looked it up. P-S-Y-C-H-I-C-A-L. Psychic call. It, it, it's, it's a term, it means, it, it's a, related to the word psychic. It's the term, uh, another term used for psychic. You know, people that, that, that discern folks from an outward, outward measure. And then a lot of the a lot of the prophesying I got this part I knew that the leaders would minister to their people based upon what they have need of in their house of prayer. Yeah. To build from that and they'll say God said it. They'll say God showed them that. So that per in other words, that person will be in gratitude to them in thinking and believing, oh God called me to be an elder. So now I'm 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 com I'm connected now to you because God used you to tell me that. Yeah. yeah. When in all actuality you've got to be the first one to know that God has called you into anything before somebody else ministers it to you. Yep. Amen. And what that does for you, uh, since they love me, especially in Virginia, that's confirmation. You know, they love to say that in Virginia. And so, therefore, it'll confirm what you already know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're talking about take dominion over you. We're still talking about that. So the body of man is separate. We're talking about the spirit, soul, and body, okay? The body of man is separable from his spirit and soul and is susceptible to death. It is the seat of the senses where the senses are in the flesh which causes the spirit and soul to have world consciousness, okay, from the fallen Adamic nature of Adam. So in other words, the reason God uses you so much in, in, in so-called prophesying and all those things in the natural, because your soul and your spirit have been basically captivated by what's going on in your flesh. Yeah. Your flesh is really controlled and from a feeling, the senses aspect, and then calling it God. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I had to learn this thing. It took years to understand this like this, so I'm thanking the Lord that finally my day of understanding is coming. We're moving on now. 
Then what you gonna do with that information? I'm gonna move on with it then. Amen. But the thing is, that's why we have to know that we know that the Spirit of God is talking. Amen. You got to know God is talking. Now God can use anybody. He used an ass, okay, the donkey. So we know that. But the thing is, you know, talking about these people that we like to relate to, that we like to be real close up on, because they, God may have used them one time. In other words, the spirit that came upon them one time to use a word to give to a soul that was in need. So now that made them a prophet, and now that soul that was in need, they gravitate to them like that. They, they God gifted to them. And that's how tradition and religion builds itself, you know, in, in the making people think that, okay, this is why our house is so full, because see, God is blessing over here. Yeah, but the thing is, he's only blessing in carnal things, worldly things. He's not blessing in spiritual things in spirituality where what needs to grow is your spirit. Well, see, the only thing that's growing over here is their pocketbooks in the natural. Yeah. yeah, and that's filled with, that's called filthy lucre because I guarantee you behind the scenes of that money, of that bank account, there's lies, deceit, you know, subtleness, art, art, craftiness, you know, cunning people. There's a lot behind that. So that's where I'm saying, you know, we have to be able to know that we know that the Lord is really speaking on our behalf, amen? Because if not, we'll be tossed to and from. I know a person like that, they're being tossed to and from. One minute, one minute I'm supposed to do this, next minute I'm supposed to do that. One minute I'm supposed to go here, next minute I'm supposed to, you, you're confused now. You have a spirit of confusion upon you. Because you don't know the voice of God. And then you don't want to comply to, if that was the voice of God, you don't want to comply to it, because that's not what you want. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. It really is. But the devil uses every aspect of that craziness called ignorance that we, that he can get into to confuse us. Yeah, take dominion over yourself. You got to be able to take the dominion over yourself that God has given us, amen? And dominion is not ownership. Oh, I've got a house. I own a house. And it's not paid for yet, but it's still mine because it's in my name, and, and I'm determined to pay for it. That's not dominion, okay? I got six cars and, and 50 pairs of shoes. That's not dominion. Take dominion over yourself over you. So Romans 7, 23 through 24 says, I got this one, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. This is how Satan does it now, according to the word, listen to the word, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. In other words, if I haven't been delivered, sin is still in the, uh, in the house. Sin is still in camp in the house, my house, your house. Verse 24 says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That's why I say in, in, in racism, the only thing that's going to deliver mankind from racism is the spirit of God. Because that thing went to the core I know, says the Lord, the core of man, which is his soul and spirit. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? So let the Spirit of God teach you how to take dominion over you. See, you can't do it because, see, mankind can never teach or preach or minister to you the will of God if they're not doing the will of God. If the will of God is not in them and it has not been perfected, they will never be able to give you kingdom's way. Amen. God's plan and purpose for the spirit man in the earth is still for man to be his visible representatives and image bearers, exercising dominion over the earth and himself. See, we want, we want to be able to name and claim, because see, the government got everything by default. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it wasn't put in their hands by the Spirit of God, because God gave man, and that's every man after the race of Adam, he gave man dominion, amen? amen. 
And so he, he, he uses man. His intent was to use man as his visible representative and image bearer in the earth to take dominion over the earth and himself. Now, if mankind can't take dominion over himself, then he's not going to be able to reflect God's power and authority. He's going to reflect that other so-called power and authority of Satan. Amen. I know we don't like that part because we don't want to be called a cow. We got the If your flesh still humming and, and humming and singing tunes, you might well say you belong to the devil. Ain't no child of God. Ain't no child of God possessed by the devil. No, it's your flesh. You got that flesh. So if we would reflect God's power and authority, we would reflect his love for all things except sin and unrighteousness and his moral character, which is the soul of man. The spirit man in you and I is called Adam. Adam was given the right by God to dominate, possess, subdue, and maintain absolute control over the earth until the spirit of the devil being God's hostile enemy, entered the flesh of the serpent. Here he comes. I'm going to change God's order. Now, the serpent at the time before his curse from God, Genesis 3, 14 through 15, he stood upright like a human. He possessed human-like flesh. And he evidently talked. <laughs> evidently he could speak. So I can understand now why the Lord said that he was, he created him as a, the most subtle beast in the field. This one was talking, okay? The word subtle means sly, artful, cunning, crafty, insinuating as a subtle person, adversary, deceitful, treacherous, and on and on. But it all really started out in heaven when he was called Lucifer, okay? He's a big dog in heaven, all right? I remember, I'll never forget how Pastor Sharon put that thing about you reaching when people reach their 20-year high, their highest peak in their lives, and that's when they begin to fall, okay? Now, Lucifer was a big dog in heaven. He started out there, and he was a fallen, he became a fallen guardian cherub. C-H-E-R-U-B, which is an angel, okay? He's one of the top dog angels. He was. His duty, his obligation was to guard the throne of God. Picture that now. See, I want you to be able to see how you lost dominion, but I want you to be able to see how you can get back dominion. Because, see, you can bypass this area of where, not bypass, but go through this area of where the devil has set up camp. It's just like the earth, the, the third heaven and heaven, okay? Or the, the earth and this other heaven or this other place sitting in between earth and heaven, okay? And that's where the Satan lodges. Okay, that's why the prayers get hindered because he out there like throwing balls at your prayers and stuff. He out there like catching them in the mitt before they can get up to its heavenly uh, destination where God is, amen? And if you're not in a place of purity, of total surrenderance to the Lord, he is, he's doing a real good catch. He's catching your stuff and it ain't making it to the ears of the Father because you ain't right. I guess that's kind of good to have him in the play like that. God know he's doing some stuff, don't he? I guess it is to have him set down like that because, again, he's really still protecting the throne of God. Though he's doing it from a deceitful manner. And God is using him in that same order. Now, he ain't, you don't think he's smart enough to see that? Mm, I see. So Satan and his demons know true holiness. They know true worship. They know serving the spirit of God because that's where he fell from. That's where the third of the angels fell from. They fell from the glory of God. Yes. And this is why when the holy days come, up, come upon people, <laughs> they come upon people and they think they dancing like David, dancing with a mic in their hand and cell phone in their hands and all that stuff, then... <laughs> Then that 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 pleases Satan. Yeah, yeah that, that that's a pleasure of his. So he already knows what 
true holiness. Now see, that ought to be like a C-Lock drop the mic moment or knock over the world uh, 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 jug and all that kind of stuff moment so you can be able to know and hear. This joker do know true holiness because that's where he fell from. So now, instead of him coming to be a noble one and, and a representative for the spirit of God, though he was in trouble with God, what did he do? He turned. <laughs> he turned and began to dilute, deceive, lie, cheat, steal about the true holiness of God. See, the thing is with the saints, the saints don't want to really get into this like this because we want to stay in the part that makes me feel good. Well, that's still the devil because that's where he wants you to stay in the feel-good part. He don't want you to ever come out of yourself, yeah. come out of who the, the, the real being, your realness, your truthfulness to come out. Because, see, when your truthfulness come out, you can go past his dwelling and get to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. And he knows that. So Ezekiel 28 describes him very good, though it's talking about the king of Tyre and, 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 and his destruction or the prince of Tyre. It talks about his lamentation. It talks about his denunciation of judgments on Zed Zion and the promises of peace and the safety of Israel. Amen. It talks about that. But today, it also serves as a reminder to us you know, that the downfall of that spirit of pride, using the spirit of pride in your beauty, in your knowledge, and all that stuff man-made, and the necessity of humbling yourself before the presence of God will cause you to fall when you don't do it God's way. And no matter who you are, no matter how many books you write, no matter how much of a thought you get, and ooh, I'm a, that's another book, ooh, that's another book, and your books ain't even educational. That man I heard say one day, he said, the writings of the saints' books is horror stories, so you done wrote another horror story. And it's not helping nobody. Nobody's spiritually growing. You just want them bookworms. See, I'm not a bookworm. You love to read what somebody else's downfall was or what somebody else done went through, and that interests you and satisfies you. That's why people buy them books, okay? They're not buying them books to change, and the books are not teaching them how to change. They're telling them about their so-called mishap. Well, guess what? Everybody that's born of a woman, amen, is only a few days old is full of trouble. That's what Job said. Now, if you come through the womb of a woman, you got trouble. Because you entered into this world, a world of darkness, a world of sin, a world that is corrupt by mankind, ungodly men and women. Because they have stolen the dominion that God gave. It's been stolen. And to make it look like, oh, you got to look like us, or you got to be a certain color to have the privileges that we have, because this is God orchestrated, and God gave this to us. And that's what it is, and that's the way it is. We're doing God a service. Yeah, we're doing God a service to make sure that black people don't achieve nothing. God is leading us. Oh, did I say that? Mm, help me, Jesus. Lucifer was created as the model of perfection. Now, where that knowledge came from, I'll never know. Because they come out of the, they, they, this race of people come out of the mountains. And they come out of the mountains with insuperiority and authority. <laughs> okay. Anyway, today, the downfall of the little prince should be our notice. The ones that understand the word, the ones that are seeking God to understand for us not to go that route of pride, to not to go that route of not humbling ourselves, to not go that route of thinking it how beautiful we are, and that to word, deed, action, and thought, okay, that we can do some things without God. Don't go that route. Lucifer was created as the model of perfection in beauty which led to his fall in sin. Sin really began in heaven. Amen. Before we knew of it as sin, it really began there. 
His heart became proud because of his beauty. Don't you see that proud spirit in the earth now? And I'm not even talking about in the center, man. I'm talking about in the believers. You still see many believers that are in leadership positions that have a spirit of pride and jealousy and envy and strife that rest upon them, and they have become so beautiful in their deceit, beautiful in their craftiness, beautiful in all of their heresy that they teach. Yes. Yeah, they're beautiful. And his perfection caused his corruption. All of that he thought he knew, and all of that he knew about God and his position that he once held as Lucifer, he used it now to taint the spirit of man. So he could just make God even mad. But see, isn't that enough right there to just let you know right there as a born again believer, oh, I'm going, I'm choosing the Lord every day. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to do things God's way. Not the, how dare he, who he thinks he is, old snoop foot, you be, oh, uh -uh, I'm going God's way. Because see, God will handle him. Right. God can take care of him. Because if God can kick him out of heaven, I know he can kick him out of my life also. Yeah, that's right. yeah. We're still talking about dominion over you. Amen? Amen? So the pride with his beauty lifted up his heart to say, that's the same way again we are today, especially saints, oh, I am Dr. So-and-so. I have a degree in this and that. I speak 50 languages. And I have a degree in this, 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 this. And I'm doctor this. And I'm PhD this. And I'm doctorate this. And oh, I'm master over that. Yeah. I got a whole lot. And then, and then, even if you want to bring the center man in, you got the center man. Well, I'm doctor so-and-so. And I'm Mr. PhD here. I'm a lawyer. I'm a professional. I do this. I do that. So what's the difference? There ain't no difference because they're both on the scale weighing the same. Mm -hmm. One just claim they call it on the name of Jesus, which they bear me to that, and another one is denouncing Jesus. Well, is the devil using both? Yeah. yeah. The devil still got both of them. Isn't that something? I know they don't want to hear that. Saints don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. But can you see the spirit of man here also? That whenever he was kicked out of the garden because of his disobedience and rebellion against God, yeah, he did serve and trip him, okay, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, he fell for it. He fell for the okie doke. So God had to dismiss him from the garden. Yeah. And to get rid of him quickly so he wouldn't steal eternal life. Uh-huh. From the tree of life. Isn't that something? God didn't even know he was a thief. Before he knew he was sealed. <laughs> so cherubims are powerful and majestic angelic creatures that surround God's throne. What an awesome job to have. What an awesome duty. Like I said, I mentioned, you know, as Sunday school's ending, we're going to teach on, on, on Wednesday, as the Lord permit, what really goes on in heaven. And let's compare what goes on in heaven down to what we see that is supposed to be heavenly minded down here. That's going to be rough. Like you said, how you said, sister? Holy, holy. They ain't crying holy down here. Uh-uh. They ain't crying that down here. They got another word coming out of their mouth. So Lucifer was a high-ranking angelic official. Lucifer means son of the morning. Watch him now, because they're going to mention him again. But they're going to mention him as Satan being son of the morning. And that's something. He had more name changes than they did than the other people in the Bible did. This is how he appears today as an angel of light, even as the devil. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. And it says, And no marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into a light, an angel of light. Verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers, that's his demons, okay, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Watch out, man. I prophesied in your name, Lord. I laid hands on, on the people, and they did recover. Mm -hmm. Lucifer 
was created with great wisdom and held a great position of authority, power, and get this, influence. Influence, that's another key word. And he was in charge of the music, praise, and worship in heaven also. Can you see the devil today? Can you see him? Can you see him see him operating? Take a look at the order of arrangement in, uh, in your so-called praise and worship services in the houses of prayer. They all across the board got the same, same curriculum. Come on, praise it. God's been good to you too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Come on, put your feet saying. You got to give God to all across the board. They're doing the same thing. Take a look at it now. Who's in charge? Ezekiel 28, 13 says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets, those are pipes and, 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 and uh, somebody else that makes music, okay? The tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. God put them all in that joker. Mm -hmm. He was really top notch up in there. He was doing some stuff. He wasn't a warrior and he wasn't like Michael and Gabriel, but he had the other part. Let us entertain heaven. He had the joy of entertaining God. I say, God as he surrounded and guarded the throne of God. You know something? Lucifer was an anointed cherub that covered the throne of God. What they love to say, he's anointed. She's an anointed woman of God. They've been anointed by God. Watch out now. What God, what God be talking about? Mm -hmm. Lucifer sat upon the holy mountain of God and he walked up and down in the midst of the soft stones of fire that like the paved work of gleaming sapphire stone upon which the God of Israel walked. He had lots of privileges. That joker don't even have to work real hard to deceive a saint of God. Isn't that something? He ain't got to work real hard to keep a drug addict down in droves. He ain't got to work real hard to keep a prostitute constantly opening up her legs and never trusting nothing else but what goes on in between her legs. Isn't that something? I'm telling you, I see why he's God's hostile enemy. Because see, he tried to be tampering with and contaminating the precious creation of God. God. God loves the pleasures of man. He loves his creation mankind. So Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the adversary, the tempter, whatever you want to call him, that's who he goes after. Because mm -hmm. see, he knows he can't touch God. That I just said is in Ezekiel 28, 14. Lucifer was created into a, a perfect being in his ways until iniquity was found in his heart. Oh, that at that 20 year pinnacle. <laughs> That go that that eight ten year pinnacle of greatness. All of a sudden now, here you come, you're coming down. My mama used to always say, "What goes up, now that's what the world says. What goes up must come down." Mama's saying was, "If I don't see you up there, I'll see you on your way back down." <laughs> I'm telling you, don't go past the saying back in the day. If I, I don't work my way up to you. I'll see you on your way back down. So in other words, you can't go to so far, you coming down. I said, oh, okay. I'm learning what those sayings used to mean. They mean now, and how they, they relate to scripture nowadays. I really am. So even though Lucifer, saying the devil, has fallen from the grace of God and his righteousness, he fakes and pretends mm -hmm. to still hold his position in God. But as a God. Can't say that now. But as a God. But remember now, he had lifted up his heart as Lucifer saying that I can be like the most high. Yeah. That's iniquity in heaven's eyesight. Yeah. So why do people think that all this here congestion that they got going on through their will and they're not being able to come together and be one in spirit and in truth is going on in heaven? Uh 
uh-uh. Now, if God kicked him out because of the iniquity that was found in his heart, what do, you, what do they think going on? They talk, always talk about God loves us. God loves us. We all one. We all in the kingdom of God. No, we're not. Wake up, people. Satan made sure, Lucifer made sure that you weren't coming up there unless you were perfect. You're going to have to be perfected by the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost himself, to get into the kingdom of God. And your fruit, you're going to have to bear fruit. You ain't getting in the kingdom as no millionaire. <laughs> you ain't going to swim with folks and deceive people and gain all your little earthly gain and then talk about ha ba 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 Uh-uh, it don't work like that. You better, better watch Lucifer's pattern. Or he does fraud it all. He put a pill taste in my mouth just knowing this. He fakes and pretends to deceive God's most precious creation, which is man, to keep him blind to the true holiness and righteousness of God that he once knew and was a part of. Yeah, you feel in God. That's him. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I feel God. I feel. That's him. That's him. That's him. That's all God on you. Yeah, so all you feelers of God. <laughs> Help me, Jesus, to stay on track here. Yeah. All you feelers of God, you better check that feeling. I'm going to say that till I die. Check yourself. Because now remember, Lucifer knows what it looks like. Lucifer knows what God requires. Lucifer knows what is true and holy and righteous in the sight of God. So as Satan, he has destroyed that. And he uses your flesh to make you think that you're serving the true and living God, but he's acting as a God Amen. and telling you, do your thing, because I love it. Amen. It's okay to bring the secular world into the, to the house of prayer, and we do what the world do. It's okay, because I'm God. I'm still feeling this thing. Amen. It's okay to lie, cheat, and steal, and teach heresy to the people of God, because I'm a forgiving God. I'm a loving God. Amen. Oh, God, he got him fooled. He got him fooled. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If we get dominion back, we don't understand a lot of things. See, because we don't have no dominion, we don't have no sight. We don't have no insight. We don't have no clarity of what the word of God means and what the will of God desires for us. And when there's no dominion, there's no peace. When there's no peace, there's no love. There's no perfection. There's none of these. There's torment. There's fear. And when there's no faith, there's no faith. But the thing is, we want to believe. Because, see, we faking and pretending, too. You know how they say, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Well, that's what the devil is doing. He's faking and pretending to be God. And because we lack spiritual discernment, because that's still you judging me now. We lack spiritual discernment. So therefore, we miss where he done slivered in. See, now he's slivered. Before he was walking. Thing still gets me to that joke of Katar. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, that thing gets me. Because see, he's hissing now. He ain't doing a whole lot of talking, but he's hissing and he's using the senses of the flesh to be able to get his point through. Thank you, Lord God. Because I'm pretty sure when God hit him and put it on that dust, put it on the dust of the earth, I'm pretty sure that probably. Uh, Cause his vocal cords to choke up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that dust, man, he got to eat. He got to <laughs> God, God said, <coughs> you think he was on, he was just smoking all this life. That's the dust. Mm -hmm. And then we always stand up, God said, God said that we, we need to get ourselves right. We need to live right. God was talking to you. <laughs> Don't bring that into the house of prayer when he's talking to you. You need to get it right. I'm telling you, that's the way we do. But then we think we, then we think that we're prophetic. We think we know everything. But there are a lot of people are doing that. They'll, they'll have dreams, and God is talking directly to them, and here they come. God wants the people to know. Wait a minute now. That sounds like that's a you and God thing. Yeah, yeah. That don't sound like that's a you God and the people thing. That's you. I'm telling you, that's what they do. 
He just starts all that he knows about the spirit of God and God's holiness to try to place himself in God's place in the earth through man. Satan calls the exact same process, amen, hear me, the exact same process too that went on in the garden of Eden that would cause God to dismiss Adam and Eve. He's doing the same thing now that whenever he sends his temptation and we bite into it or whenever we fall and stuff and we bite into it and then condemnation comes and hit us and we don't know how to get back up and, and repent and clean ourselves up and get back in the will of God. He uses that same stuff. So see, as long as you're condemning yourself, God can't do nothing with you. Because, see, your spirit now is condemned. Your spirit now is downtrodden because of your sin. He said, you now God going to dismiss you. God going to put you out of his presence. And see, and we'll live in such a manner so that's what happens. Not so much that God did it, but we'll dismiss ourselves. Because of ignorance. Again, ignorance is playing a big factor. What does Satan, Satan plays off of the ignorance of the believer. He, that's how he gets his leverage upon the people of God. It's because of their ignorance. What does the Bible say in Hosea 4 and 6? He said, my people, he said, they perish from a lack of knowledge. That you perish it because you don't know God. You're perishing because you're allowing your feelings to tell you this is God. Well, stop doing that because that's the devil's territory. Feelings is his territory. Emotions is of the soul. And they are used simultaneously, but there is a slight difference. One is spiritual and one is natural. Maybe that's the only way they catch it. Yeah. We're still talking about dominion. Take dominion over you. God dismissed or dispelled them from the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, 24, just as he did Lucifer from heaven. So Lucifer, now if I got kicked out of heaven and the garden and the presence of God as with the serpent and stuff, I'm going to do the same thing in the earth. I'm going to wreak havoc in the earth the same way. But because we don't want to study, we don't want to be taught nothing, we don't want to get in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sink with the spirit of God that he can communicate with us and tell us who that adversary is and who that oppressor is, the oppressor is down here in the earth. See, we don't want to get with God to find out all that information. Oh, that's my people. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's why he ain't telling you nothing. I'm telling you, it's a vicious cycle. But guess what? God is only somebody that can stop that cycle. This thing is spiritual. It's a spirit and it's spiritual. Today, the spirit of pride is what kills mankind's spirit, soul, and body. Even today, man kills himself through his pride, rebellion, and rejection of the word and the will of God. He does it to himself. And Satan knows it. Lucifer wants to be worshipped like God is worshipped. So he wants you to believe that he's the God of all blessings. He wants you to believe that you can live a decrepit life, a life that's still wretched in salvation. Let's come on over in. God will accept you. The Bible tells you to come as you are. Yes, it do. But you've got to get cleaned up. You've got to be made right. You've got to be perfected in him. Amen. Yep. All those things, see, we don't, we don't, we don't get those little IEs, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But see, Lucifer wants to be worshipped, so he wants you to worship him through your flesh now and, and, and that feel-good moment that you're feeling. You know, one thing that always, always gets me also is whenever, you know, the pastors and the leaders always say, well, I, I, I ain't feeling it today. What you ain't feeling, sir and ma'am? <laughs> Why you ain't feeling? And what you feeling for? If you get in the spirit, you ain't going to feel no way. Spirituality doesn't carry a feeling. No. Spirituality carries the unity of heaven and God down here in the earth through you. It don't come a feeling. Lord have mercy. This is why, this is why I'm glad we don't fellowship with that woman. 
She always got some. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, she always coming out with some. She'll start out pretty good sometimes, but then she always go off on a, on a deep cat. She's so deep. No, this ain't deep. This ain't deep. The only deep part is your lack of understanding. That's deep. I'm not, I'm like, you don't understand that? What? <laughs> you can't grasp that? Why? What's the problem? Sin. Can you see the exact same spirit operating in the earth today through many that have compromised with the devil? By their fruit, Jesus said, you shall know them. Satan has fallen and is a fallen son of the morning, okay? You know, that's who he is, the son of the morning. Even though he calls himself now the God of this world, or is it the prince of this world, the prince of this world. Yeah, because he can't be a God. That means he still got, he still got, he's subject to the, the, the king. It's only a prince. That's another thing we need to get down to. If all he is is a prince, he ain't nobody until he conforms to the kingdom and the king's ways. Isn't that something? I tell you, mm, 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 mm. thank you, Jesus. Satan has fallen and is a fallen son of the morning, even though he still possesses his power through the power of influence and control like he had over the third of angels and their generations to come. He took he them with him. He didn't care. That's the same way they are today. Crabs in a bucket. I'm going to take you to hell. I know I'm on my way to hell. I'm taking people with me. That's the attitude that that, that, that unsaved, lukewarm, backslidden people have. Transgressors have. That's the attitude. I'm taking you with me. Well, I don't believe all that because I got my own interpretation, my own understanding. You need to run from that person. Whoever tells you that I know my heart, I understand this, I, uh -uh, you need to run and run fast. Because the devil is on board. Yeah, and anytime two can't walk together and agree in spirituality, there's something wrong. And all you want to do is teach tradition and religion, and all we want to talk about is spirituality. Here come the pagan of the Red Sea. He's going to open it up and separate it. I'm trying to tell you, we need to do something. We, we got work to do. Amen? Amen. So Revelation 12 and 4 is where you can talk. We talked about his tail through the third part of the stars of the heavens and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Isn't it amazing, though? You know, I need to stop thinking as, I, as, I'm, as I'm reading these notes and stuff. Isn't it amazing how they teach you about Revelation, but they don't teach you about that third of them angels that, that Lucifer took down with him? Hmm, I might think on that too one day. That's another food for thought. Satan has a form of godliness that denies the power of God that he uses through many to deceive men. Why did he have a form? Because that's his, that's his, he was a liar, Jesus said from the beginning. He's the father of lies. He wants you to believe like he believes. Yet he knows he's going to hell, so he wants to take you with him also. Amen. So therefore, he don't want you to see the truth. Yeah, because see, the truth is going to shine the light on, on a liar. That's what truth does. But if we be in our flesh so hard, we can, it's so hard to let go. No, it ain't. Just let go. Satan has a form of godliness. Satan settles for just enough, just enough to get every born again believer to a state of spiritual ignorance, spiritual deafness, spiritual blindness to the things of God that through the cares and concerns of this world and their flesh, they're catered to that more so than their spirituality. Because, see, a lot of people really do think that spirituality is a hard process. You know, it's not. Like we was talking earlier about the immediate fa inter intermediate fasting or fasting period. All you got to do is come out your flesh. Yeah, it's just easy as that. Well, I can't fast because I'm on medication. Okay. I can't fast because I'm too fat. 
Okay. I can't fast. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I can't fast because I, 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 I work every day and I don't have time to, and I need to eat. I can't fast because uh, uh, that's just not, I, I don't believe in fasting. Okay. But if the doctor said, yeah, yeah. doctor said, well, I need to do some blood work on you, so I need you to go 12 hours without a meal. Okay, doctor. Okay, sir. Then I got to tell it to everybody when I get home. My doctor told me don't eat. But if Jesus said don't eat so you can come up out that flesh and be born again spiritually, what you gonna do? That don't take all that. Mm -mm. I'm trying to tell you just how the mindset of people are. And these are people that say they're saved. These are people that say they love God. Now, I'm not talking about people that really do have issues and stuff, you know, and, and they really cannot fast. But there's something you can do called consecration when it comes down to the Spirit of God. There's something. You are left without nothing to do. So Satan just said us for every born-again believer that is spiritually ignorant. And there's no one and nothing like our God today and forever. Can you see yet where you are not in control of or over anything? Is it either God? It is either God or the devil. Think about that thing. You still ain't got no dominion. You still ain't got to put your eyes over nothing. Not a thing. In closing, how do you get your dominion back? It must begin with Jesus. Jesus in you and you in Jesus. Okay, let me say that. Jesus in you and you in Jesus. Ain't no such thing as I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus, but you're not in him. And he's not in you. There's no such thing as that. Dominion is supreme authority. It's sovereignty. Dominion is an inner conscious, consciousness obtained only through a mind that's disciplined. This supreme authority comes as man, the spirit man, realizes his oneness with the Father, and he's been reunited with his Father, his creator, the bishop of his soul. I'm telling you, those are happy times right there. I know for a fact they are. Dominium is not your ownership. Ownership, <laughs> I didn't come, I, you know, I was just saying ownership. Dominion is not your ownership and control over it. That's not what dominion is. But it is being a good steward and a caretaker over what you have been given, been given responsibility to do. Well, what they got to do with me? Well, your body. You need dominion over your body. You got to be able to take control over your body versus allowing the external environment to be, you be subject to it and you cater to it. Just let the spirit of God take over. Amen. Because see, did we, even these bodies really are not ours. It's God's creation. All things and everything belong to him. God didn't give man ownership over what he created, but he gave him dominion over it as a good steward to be responsible over his creation in which he remains, God himself, he remains active, alive, and in charge over it all. Isn't that something? Because see, we have the tendency to think as ignorant people that God is not alive, God don't hear, God ain't going to do nothing, and we're in charge. You know, we become the Avengers of our lives. Avengers in the earth. Because we don't believe God exists. Ungodly men and women may appear to hold. They, it's, it's just a look, okay? May appear to hold God's creation and his people in their hands through their ungodly stewardship. But all of God's creation will be restored in its fullness, back to its originality, and all things will be made new. Revelation 21, 1 through 5 says so. To exercise dominion over the earth today. Here it is right here. To exercise dominion over the earth today. If you want to say that you, you know, everywhere your footstep tread, you got the dominion, you give God glory, then this is what you got to do. To exercise dominion over the earth today is to do as the word of God commands us to do and go out into all the world to make this
disciples of all nations. This is the greatest way to exercise your dominion over the earth. Not by tranquilizing and shooting up the animals and catching them and plugging them and putting this in them and impregnating them and all that. That don't give you dominion, okay? Abusing them and using them for your entertainment and all that kind of stuff. Even doing that to some people, that is not dominion. Dominion is not mistreating and abusing mankind because of the color of their skin. Everything that God did for the spirit man from his beginning to now, the spirit of the devil has come to imitate, to duplicate, amen, to distort, to do evil, and to do other evil and otherwise to what God has purposed for man himself. The devil's purpose for man is to lie and deceive him to reject and rebel against God and God's righteousness by disguising himself as being the true and living God. A God that will compromise, a God that will permit, that will permit wickedness and evilness, sin and transgressions in, and with God and use God's word and attempt God's righteousness for all mankind to say, this is God. You see it today. You see it. I know you see it because I know I see it. God's purpose and intent is still the same for the spirit man in you and I as it was from the beginning. Let's take dominion over ourselves. Let, let, let's come into the agreement with the Spirit of God so he can become, you can become his temple. You can become his transport in the earth. That I'm going to let God, I'm going to let God have all of me, my whole self. I'm not going to put no more limitations on him. I'm not going to put no restrictions on him. So let him come and take total control over you and that devil in the earth. Because see, when he takes control over you, your own self, guess what? The devil gets locked in. He can't do nothing. He can't go nowhere. He don't even have time to exit. Because he's he always sneaking up, trying to deceive you through the flesh. Let's read Psalms 50 to end this my sister. Psalms 50. Psalms chapter 50. Psalms 50. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Outside in the perfection of beauty, God has shone. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. And fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. Verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. Yes, sir. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices, or thy burnt offerings that have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Everything belongs to God, no matter what. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. Verse 12. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes 
or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consented, consented with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Mm -hmm. These things hast thou done and kept silence. Though, though thou foutest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this. Ye that forget, forget God, lest I tear, tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation all right, will I shew the, the salvation of God. Amen. Okay. That was the last verse. Okay. Thank you. That's our benediction right there. Psalms 50. Amen. So we need to take dominion over ourselves. Because no matter what you do, you'll never be able to gain the dominion that God gave mankind without God. God owns everything. He never gave up rights to what he created. But he did give us the dominion to be able to keep it, to do it. Amen. And make sure that we maintain it according to the will of God, that it will always reflect God's love, his kindness, his joy, his peace. So when we build buildings and shrines and all that stuff and name them in the name of somebody, and we think that that's good, you need to really consider the fact, is God in this? Did God have anything to do with this? Take the minimum over you. Begin by taking care of your body so God can be God in your body. So he can move around in the earth and settle some things that need to be settled in this earth according to his will. He can't do it without your body being perfected for his host himself and all of his host. But he ain't coming alone. So you got to be able to make sure there's all room for everybody in your body. <laughs> I love it. Father God, we thank you. And we thank you, oh God, for the word of God is true. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us clarity and making sure that we understand. So, Lord God, we love you, we appreciate you, and we close with Psalms 50. And we, oh God, will do all that we know to do as we permit you to be Lord of Lords and King of Kings over us. And you have the dominion over us that we will be able to do according to your will, as you will, in the name of Jesus. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for healing and delivering. Thank you for always keeping us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. amen.